and welcome to Viewpoints. My name is Rick Harlow. I'm here with Judd Freed. We're going to talk about his thesis, The Foundational Flaws in the Homeland Security Enterprise. Judd, tell me about this thesis. It sounds very interesting. Well, Rick, I uh, came to the program thinking as broadly as I could about um, where I, as a local emergency management homeland security person, uh, could make some contribution to this overall thing that we're calling homeland security. Uh, and the more I looked at it and the more I listened to media reports and to other people talking about all the things that are wrong with it um, and all the need now to measure it, it started me thinking about, well, why are things wrong with it? What, what, what is it that we're trying to measure? And in looking at Homeland Security as, as an enterprise, I came to the conclusion that the problems weren't so much in the execution of what departments are doing and agencies are doing, it was in the way that we had thought about Homeland Security as a thing to begin with. Uh, and so really uh, what I found as I was doing the research is that the problems with Homeland Security were A, at the ground level. When they, when they decided to start doing this, we had flaws. Uh, and B, fixable. Uh, fixable without ignoring everything that we've already done or throwing out uh, the money that we've already spent within a political reality, we could actually fix it. And decided that, you know, at least sounded like good ideas to me, let's go find out whether or not I'm anywhere close to being right. So how far back did you look? When you, when you talk about the, the development of the Homeland Security Enterprise, did you start at 9-11 or did you look further back than that? No, actually I, I went further back. Um, I, I have been working in the emergency management field for a quarter of a century. Um, and, and I was thinking to myself, and, and, and my research really kind of showed that um, the, the concept of protecting this homeland isn't something new that started on 9-11 or 9-12. Or and in fact, uh, one of the people that I, that I cited in, in my thesis even said, you know, there's this thing, the 9-12 syndrome, where we've gone back and decided that everything we did before had to be bad because we missed this. Um, and we've thrown out everything that we did. And so, in fact, I went all the way back uh, originally to Abraham Lincoln, looking at some of their decisions in the Civil War. Uh, to get my arms around a little bit better, I, I really concentrated more on uh, what FDR did uh, as a result of dealing with the crisis of the Great Depression and trying to take a global look at, well, we're, we have a crisis. How do we deal with crisis in general uh, as a nation? And uh, the Great Depression brought up some really good re uh, not recipes, some really good uh, analogies to how we're coping with this homeland security crisis, as we're calling it now. Uh, so um, it's not something new, uh, in, in my opinion. It's, it's something that, that the country's been facing really since its inception. I, I even went back to some of the early constitutional law findings and, and how the country was uh, set up and uh, enjoyed that. Got to go back and, and look at history a little bit and how that plays into today. So what was your methodology here? You know, when, when, when we first started, I was trying to figure out what would my methodology be. It was one of the hardest things that I had to do. And in the end, uh, what I did was something that, that um, the program referred to as a knowledge expansion thesis. Uh, I took a look at, at a large amount of literature, not just, you know, other people's writings on, on these topics, but at law, at history, at some of the foundational documents of the United States, uh, the Constitution, Declaration, Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers. Um, you can almost think of it as a giant lit review um, that, that I then took and, and tried very hard to synthesize um, what, what had been going on here for 200 years and, and how that plays into particularly this last 10 years of Homeland Security. Can you give me an example of, of one of the foundational flaws that you found? Sure. I, I, I use the term I call metapolicy, uh, metapolicy being the the things that lead us to develop a policy. So you have a plan, which is a, a tactical way of carrying out a policy that's set by government, let's say. But what were the purposes of that policy? Why are we trying to do the things we do? During the Great Depression, um, the Roosevelt administration sought to uh, solve the depression by dealing with all of the uh, social ills of the country. So they passed these huge numbers of laws, created huge numbers of federal agencies um, to try and fix everything at once. So the policy of coping with the depression uh, was only a part of 
this overall thing, that the meta policy behind it, the, the concepts behind it were fix everything. Uh, I took a look at that in terms of Homeland Security where, you know, the, the genesis of what we call Homeland Security today is, you know, terrorism. But really there's more to it than that. And, uh, you know, we can look at, you know, Homeland Security as being the resiliency of the nation. So in, in doing that research and trying to figure out what those policies were and the reasoning behind the policies, I found uh, very quickly that the biggest problem that we had, the biggest foundational flaw of all, is that we have failed as a nation to define Homeland Security. If, uh, if I asked you to describe a red ball, um, you know, you could do it, but so could 300 other people, and we wouldn't necessarily come up with the same thing. You need to describe the color, the size, what's it made of, uh, you know, what's the atmospheric pressure. I mean, there's so many details to it. But in Homeland Security, we just simply throw billions and billions of dollars at something and say, hey, here's Homeland Security. Uh, you know, more than $39 billion in federal grants uh, since 9-11 that have been given out to state and local entities uh, to do what? You know, what, what is Homeland Security? Now we have Congress, uh, rightfully so, wants to know what their return on investment is. And they want us to come up with metrics, measurements for Homeland Security. Well, how do you do that? Uh, if you don't know what it is you're measuring, you can't measure that thing. Uh, so that was one of the, the huge flaws that I found here is uh, that our meta policy is flawed. And one of the major flaws was the failure to define our terms. So then your thesis concentrates a great deal on actually making those definitions. It does, yeah, um, and, and actually had, had a lot of um, fun and angst both mm -hmm. uh, in doing that. But uh, a couple of things that I figured had to be defined, uh, at least to keep the, the thesis internally consistent, I had to define what an enterprise is. I mean, you know, the, the word itself. I had to define what is Homeland Security. And because Homeland Security is contingent on the risk to the nation, I had to spend some time defining risk. Um, which is uh, yet another flaw uh, in, in our, our enterprise is that we, we haven't figured out exactly how to measure risk, what risk is going to be, which risks we're going to address. Um, so, yeah, the first section of, of the thesis is, is strictly trying to come up with some definitions. Whether those definitions are the ones that, that the United States government adopts at some point in the future um, wasn't the point. Of the thesis, it was really so that when I framed my argument, if, if I'm saying that in my argument you can't define a rubber ball, a ball without saying what it's about, and I thought to myself that to stay consistent within the writings, I had to give you what it was I was defining. So you found these flaws, you made these definitions, you said that you found some solutions. Tell me about that. Courses of action is what I called them, um, and, and, and you could say they're just suggested courses of actions, but uh, and, and there were a number of them on there. The main thing that I, I, I came to the conclusion of is that it's very easy for folks to say, well, as an example, uh, the entire United States House, or, or excuse me, United States Senate, sits on a committee, uh, one or more committees, that has Homeland Security oversight. Almost the entire United States House also sits on committees with oversight of Homeland Security. It, is popular in a lot of the literature that I found out there to say, well, you know, we, we have to have fewer oversight committees, we have to have fewer congressmen and senators involved in these oversight committees. That's all nice to say, but there's political reality. The political reality is that that is not going to change. So trying to find solutions or courses of action that ignored political reality, um, we're not going to fly. And, and similarly, you know, we've spent $39 billion. Um, it would be politically impossible for anyone to get up there on Capitol Hill and say, we've wasted all $39 billion, let's start over 10 years later. It would also be untrue. Uh, we've done a lot of good with $39 billion. I mean, the things that we have purchased and the training that we have, have gotten down to the locals and to the federal agencies has definitely had a, a positive benefit. So I took a look at, you know, what can we do um, to, to solve some of these issues? And, and one of them uh, was that the, the U.S. government is going to have to decide what Homeland Security is. That, that has to happen. I propose a definition for it that in my thesis, I think it's valid. I think it's, it's valid from research. I think it's valid from practice. Um, but some definition has to be there so we know where the funding is going. Um, and, and secondarily to that, we have to then decide how best to fund this as a nation, particularly in an economy that's so limited. Um, uh, looking back at those meta-policy decisions, uh, my thought was that we stay within constitutional 
boundaries. The United States federal government should set some uh, overall national goals. These are the things to make a more resilient homeland uh, within whatever this definition of homeland security is. And now you states, you're going to have to figure out how to achieve those national goals plus whatever other state goals it is. Take a look at your own risks, your own threats. Um, let's just say that, that a, a national goal might be to be prepared for weapons of mass destruction. And I'm not proposing that as a goal, but let's just say that's a national goal. Um, one of those weapons of mass destruction that we worry about are chemical and radiological. So Wisconsin and Maryland and, and, and Wyoming, Minnesota, um, you have to be prepared. You have to certify, if you will, to the people of the United States, people of your own state, that you, Governor Harlow, are happy with how your state is prepared for doing that. And we'll help you with that funding. Uh, right now, there's $7 million available to your state. That's all you're going to get. So it might take you 10 years to get happy with it but you're working towards a goal. And now you can go back to the, to the people of the United States and say that Wisconsin is working towards this goal or whatever state you're in, Minnesota, is working towards that goal. And here are metrics then that we can measure. How are you gonna cope with that problem in your state? It's gonna be different in Wyoming than it is in Minnesota. It'll be different in Minnesota than it is in New York. Uh, it may be different within a region of a state. Um, you know, the Twin Cities area of Minnesota where I am uh, borders Wisconsin. In order to cope with some of these things, maybe we have to have an agreement with Wisconsin for how we'll handle a chemical threat. Um, the northern part of my state and the southern part of my state have very few large urban areas. They're not going to have the full-time fire department with all those really cool toys. So how is Minnesota going to solve those problems? Um, we will solve it one way. We can probably then show you in your state that this way worked for us, and maybe some of that will work, maybe some of it won't. Uh, in a place where there is nothing, we might have to get more federal funds in there to get it up to whatever this level is. In a place where there's a huge capability, and, and I know this sounds counterintuitive, but in a place where the huge capability already exists, maybe they need less federal funding because they're already at an A level or a 10 on a 1 to 10 scale, and we just want to make sure they stay there. Whereas Wyoming, to get onto that scale at all, will need $20 million. Uh, by looking at national risk, what are the risks to the U U.S. homeland, um, specifically to the U.S. homeland, and by looking at the things that, that are truly risk-based, what do we as a nation have to do? So there is a role for the federal government in setting national priorities. There's a role then for the states and the locals to meet those national priorities with federal help and to at the same time identify what other priorities they have, which is not a federal role. It's not up to the federal government to fix things in my hometown unless that applies directly to this national goal. In that way, uh, block grants or cooperative agreements or whatever you want to say, we can better use what little, little money is going to be available to achieve goals that we can then go back to the federal government and to the people of the United States and simply say, okay, here is what we have done. Here is where we are going. We're going to fix problem A. It's going to take 20 steps to do it. This year, we're going to get only one step done. Next year, we'll get two. Very interesting topic, Jack. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Rick. Good to see you.